When I see a, a crowd like this full capacity, it reminds me of the motivational speaker in Texas that, that came before the crowd of 5,000. He said, ladies and gentlemen, there are two great evils that plague our society and the world at large. And those two evils are ignorance and apathy. And he turned to a man in the front row and said, isn't that right? And the guy goes, he shrugged, he says, I don't know and I don't care. <laughs> There's another motivational speaker that uh, just made it into town on, on time. He flew in, they took him to his hotel and then whisked him down the auditorium where several thousands were waiting for him. And he was standing in the back behind the curtain and here he realized he, he had everything but he had forgotten his teeth. <laughs> And he turned to the stage and the fellow that was there and he said, can you help me? I forgot my teeth. The guy says, I, I got some right here. And he handed them to them and he stuck them in and they were way too small. They were just all over his mouth. I said, oh, that's, that's no good. He says, I got another pair. And so he pulled it out and he stuck it in and those teeth were way too big. It is too tight. It's not, it is not work either. And the guy says, I got one more pair. And he pulls it out and he gives it to him. He stuck it in his mouth and they were exactly right. And so he was able to go out and he did his motivational speech and the crowd just standing, oh, they were all tremendously enthused. And so after it was over, he went up to the back and saw the guy. He said, sir, I can't thank you enough because you saved my bacon. He says, by the way, he says, what do you do for a living? Are you a dentist? And the guy says, um, no, I'm an undertaker. <laughs> like we always like you to greet your neighbor so why don't you turn to the neighbor on your right and say I understand you're very well off <laughs> Sorry, I forgot my PIN number. <laughs> well, it's great to be back in uh, Northside Baptist, and uh, we so appreciate the church uh, making this auditorium available to us. As you know, we do these concerts uh, twice a year. And I'm reminded of a story of a family went to church Sunday morning, and they were having, having uh, dinner afterwards, and the moms woke up and said, you know, the choir was kind of up. been the choir master. <laughs> so she complained about the choir and the dad said, you know, and the pastor really went way too long. And so just then their 12 year old daughter, she chimed up and she says, yeah, but it was a great show for a buck. <laughs> Do you know what the uh, difference between a musician and a mutual fund is? Eventually, one of them matures and earns income. <laughs> I heard of a, a woman that died and went to heaven, and uh, St. Pete had been on the gate for a little long, and he wanted to break. He says, I tell you what, you man the gate, anybody comes through, uh, just give them a skill testing question of some sort. She said, fine. So he went off for a little break, and, and just then her ex-husband came to the gate. <laughs> What are you doing here? Huh? What are you doing here? She says, well, I'm just manning the gate right now, and there's a skill testing question. He says, what's that? She said, it's a spelling test. Spell Czechoslovakia. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, where's everybody from tonight? And of course, we all know you don't get to heaven by spelling the right words, so don't write me a theological note and give it to me later. Where's everybody from tonight? Just shout it out. Just where you're from. Anybody from Hamilton? Anybody from Hamilton? Yeah, back. Hamilton's my hometown, and do you know why Hamilton has toxic? 
They're doing it again. Do you know why Great Hamilton golden. has toxic waste and Toronto has lawyers? <laughs> Hamilton got first pick. <laughs> Lastly, I heard of a, a young uh, city slicker that had gone to Bible College and he was all primed up and he thought he'd go out witnessing in the country. And so he drove way out to the country and saw this farmhouse in a big lane. And uh, so he drove in there and the old farmer was sitting out there on the porch just rocking back and forth, enjoying himself. And so he comes up and says, well, good day, sir. He says, are you busy working in the vineyard of the Lord? And the farmer says, no, nah, those are soybeans. <laughs> He says, no, no, he says, are you a Christian? And he says, no, they live three concessions over to the east. He says, no, no, he says, are you lost? The farmer says, no, I've lived here all my life. He says, well, tell me, he says, are you ready for the judgment? And the farmer says, well, when's that going to be? And he says, well, it could be tomorrow or the next day or on the weekend. The farmer says, whatever you do, don't tell my wife, otherwise she'll want to go all three days. <laughs> Well, again, we are just delighted to see you here tonight. Capacity crowd, I think there's about 650 of us here tonight. And just, isn't this a great way to start the new year? That, that we can come to and it is my joy for the last two years to be connected with uh, Heading Home Trail that actually originated from this church. And uh, we're going to uh, share some songs with you. Uh, for a little while before we bring on our very special guests. So would you make welcome tonight.